What's up, everybody? Zach Wentz here. Uh, Wentz Bros Outdoors. Wentz Bros Outdoors here in Eagleville, Pennsylvania. Just about 30, 45 minutes outside of Philly. Um, out here visiting our great friends here at Streamlight, Mike Deneen here. Um, Eagleville, Pennsylvania, just right out our back door. Eagles fans, some Giants fans. Some but Eagles fans, some Giants fans. Really excited, Mostly Eagles. Really excited to be here. Um, my first time at the factory, just getting a lot of background information about Streamlight, who they are, where they've come from, and then some application for you know all the products that we've used in the field the last fall, uh, where they've come from, and where their vision is. So Mike, just give us a little background about Streamlight and where you guys have been. You bet. Hey, Zach, welcome to Streamlight. Yeah, Glad you. you guys can make it out. Yeah. Really love the relationship. So. We're going into our uh, 46th year here at Streamlight, and uh, it's been a great run. We've been in Norristown, Pennsylvania, and now Eagleville, Pennsylvania. We've been here for about 15 years, and we'll give you a little bit of a walk around. We just finished off our second expansion. Awesome. So it's been uh, it's been a good run, and this sporting goods world is a super important market for us. So we're happy to work with you. Awesome. The unique thing about Streamlight is a lot of people in the sporting goods world is it's relatively new compared to what Streamlight has been doing it over is. the last 50 years. It is. Uh, we were really founded on the backs of law enforcement, fire service, uh, some military business, uh, anything to do really with downrange light, search and rescue operations, and then in the fire service, the ability to cut through smoke with light. And those are really the backbone markets that we were founded on. I think that's what's really cool about the whole thing is that the outdoors is part of it. Anybody who goes outdoors knows when you're doing a lot of outdoor activities, things happen at night. Things happen in the morning or at night when you can't see and so the, the crossover between all the things that have happened law enforcement first responders to now get into this space is really cool so one of the things they pride themselves on is you know really downrange light um, so what we're going to do quick is they have a cool little facility right here where we're going to test downrange light and just show some of the new products yeah one of the ideas of the facility here is that we're self-contained so everything from the design engineer work on the lights to assembly operations and then importantly any kind of test work that we have to do on the lights to certify it for ANSI specifications or to test it to Streamlight standards uh, because we really like to set a standard above and beyond the industry. So this is our light range. This is really where we test candle power, which is downrange light. Um, we have lights for just about any kind of application in law enforcement, military, fire service, industrial, transit systems, whatever it might be. You know, the hard thing to do is to blend lumens, which is you know, the total voluminous output of a light, with candle power, which is downrange light. And that's really what we work on here. What we've talked about is you know, everyone does everyone does lumens, everyone does brightness, but with the candle power, the candle power is really just emitting light downrange a long way. We were talking before, you know, this, this, this specific light, I could be sitting on a chair one mile away, and I could sit there and read a newspaper, Clean as day, uh, with no problem. So, you know, you think of, you know, I was talking to Mike, said, this is really cool, but like, tell me a great application. Um, you think of all the first responders, search and rescue, things like that. It may not be, you know, a prototypical outdoorsman that's using this, but this is the type of stuff that they're developing and building right here um, in America, which is super cool. Um, the other thing, you know, on an outdoors perspective is, big giant toolkit here are the things that, you know, are maybe a little more in the outdoors, but. You think of those applications when you're um, an outdoors and whether you're on a boat, mm -hmm. whether you're duck hunting, whether you're fishing, whether you're going somewhere in the back bays and you can't see where you're going. You think of the applications where you're, uh, what's happening all the time. We're out waterfowl hunting, you get to a field and you're saying, man, where were those birds last night? I can't see. And it's pitch dark, you're relying on your headlights in your truck. Well, bust out a couple leaves that have the flood and the downrange spotlight, you're gonna be able to see exactly where you need to go. So, uh, really cool that they're testing it all right here. We're able to, everyone, well, I was joking, I said, how, how do you know someone's not going to joke and say their light's more powerful? Well, the, the standards are set. You know, this is a standard test that everyone does to test their, their downrange candle power. And it's just, you know, really unique that they're doing it all right here in, in the state. Yeah, and through Plato, which is the Portable Light American Trade Organization, everyone tests the product the same way. So the numbers tell the truth. Yeah, I come across some really interesting applications. I was at Denver Airport a while back and had my Streamlight shirt on. And a gentleman came up to me and said, hey, thanks, I love your lights. And I said, what do you do? He said, I work on pipelines. Yeah. And often I'm out there at night and I've got to put light down range sometimes pretty far. So your lights really help me get through the night. Yeah, it's just, it's so much more, you know, a lot of the things in the outdoor space are outdoor driven. You know, they're outdoor products, but this company is so much bigger. And that's what to me makes it, you know, unique to this area. Uh, the next stop, we're gonna kind of take you guys downstairs to see uh, kind of a production line of cell. 
Because I think what, like I said, what makes it so unique is that these things aren't being assembled via machinery or coming already done, and then they distribute them. The parts are being sent here, but people are investing labor, time, and making sure everything is detailed exactly before they ship it out. So we will show you one of those cells before looking at a couple products. That sounds great. Okay. That's the lunch bell we heard? That's the lunch bell. So uh, everyone's getting their uh, midday break for lunch. And uh, it's actually probably a good time to walk around because it's a little quiet. What you can see real quick, I think what's, what's super neat about this is that they obviously have tons of inventory here, so they can go quickly out to distributors whenever they need it, but also when they get orders in here on these cells, they're going to assemble them as the order comes in. So it's not something that they're trying to sit on the product and say, hey, we need to move product now. But as an order comes in, they got people who are going to run the logistics and get everything set up and build it on the spot. So we'll show you one of those cells, what that looks like, and then we'll head in. depending on the product every cell would be unique and so when we receive an order in we kick it back to our scheduling operations they'll schedule it we'll build it depending on what the product is uh, we'll consolidate that product with other products that might be on an order for a big distributor or retailer of ours consolidate it and ship it out the door yeah we try and reduce finished goods inventory as much as possible I was telling Mike when we originally got here I said you know my vision of you know 21st century you know, assembly and production is going to be all fully automated machines and things just coming down a chute, being built by machines and done. And then I got here and I was like, this is way different than what I thought. And it's, to me, it's better. You know, we got local people here putting in hours, working right here, you know, supporting the local economy. And these people are investing their time and making sure everything works specifically before it goes out. So to me, that was one of the coolest things here is that it's right here, it's local, yeah. it's in the States. They're assembling, producing here, and then shipping out uh, was one of the really things that really got me excited when we got here. It's a great picture over your shoulder. You know, we have a little over 300 employees here at Streamlight. And by, you know, having those employees, what we're able to do is we're not pushing product through machines. We want a diverse product line. Our catalog's 140 pages thick now. Because depending on what market we're in, every customer has a different need yeah. for their lighting. That's the, we were talking earlier today too about, you know, product line and, and catalogs. And you think about, all these cells, and you think about 140 different products in your catalog. If anything, that would, to me, scream, all right, they're getting sent over here, ready to go, pre-made, and that's going out. But you're talking 100, 140 different products, all with, you know, the, the right, I mean, yeah, it's a light, certainly, but all have their unique twist, who they're, who they're made for, maybe a little variation with power, um, all the little different trinkets that you guys add, you know, the, the yep. power cords, adapters, all the things that you guys can add and make them unique is what uh, makes this so, so cool. It's purpose built, you know, depending on what market you're in, maybe rechargeability is important to this customer, yeah. downrange lights important to this customer, yeah. and another customer might be runtime for sure. uh, from the product. So that's it, uh, it's all customer focused. Now, so. well, we're gonna head down the hall, one of the favorite halls I got, when I, when I got here right yeah, away, there were, there were some trophies on the wall that said, oh, this is uh, for outdoors, but here, no, go look at a couple products that we were using this fall. You bet. So this is our uh, retired president and CEO, Brad Penny, uh, really got us into the sporting goods market going back a little over 20 years ago. Yeah. And it's been a great market for us ever since. And so when you talk sporting goods market, we can, we'll talk this in there too, but you know, sporting goods being really one of the, kind of a niche market that you know, is new. Yeah. Um, the other markets, particular, you know, the industrial, the first responders, you know, what was the vision and what was the reason why really kind of getting in the outdoor space or the, the uh, sporting goods market was important for you guys? Yeah, so for years, I mean, our, our backbone markets, uh, fire service, law enforcement, yeah. military, we feel all those customer bases 
are made up of outdoorsmen. Mm -hmm. And it was really the customers that, that would say to us, hey, can you, can you do this light for camping? Or, yeah. you know, when I'm getting ready early in the morning for a hunt and trying to get out there and deploy everything, I, I need good headlamps. Yeah. And so it was really driven by those customer bases. So whether it's industrial or automotive, a lot of outdoorsmen in those markets. I think that's what's unique is there's so much crossover between those people and outdoorsmen. And yeah. so when they start wearing stream light, Headlamps when they're working a job, when they're working when the stream light, uh, light boxes, when they're using that, they're saying, How can this translate into that? Yeah. And you guys really took that and said, Okay, let's make something specifically for the outdoor space. And the thing we like about it, you, you mentioned earlier when we were chatting, you know, in a lot of these markets, you're issued a light. Yeah. Yeah, you're a police officer, a firefighter. You go into sporting goods, they get to choose. Yeah. And they're, they're picking stream light, which is it's, uh, it, it's a good feeling. Absolutely. We'll look at a couple of the products that are displayed out there, a couple of products that we use too. And uh, it depends on the application and you know what we thought of the products this fall. You bet. I also love to hear the story behind this deer with just uh, like I'll the, check. The I'll, knife, check like with, the, I'll check in with Brad on that. Like the yeah. knife like brow times at the uh, super cool, a lot of character. Brad right still here. comes by quite a bit, so I'll ask him for you. How's our timing? catalog of 144 products you're starting to see now what makes up those products where you know this light is different than this light um, so super unique you know most people think that it's just going to be a light you know what, what can make it different but all these things have had some things different so I'm gonna start to show you a couple of products that we use this fall and sure. let you kind of chime in with, uh, you with, bet. with some application you know we talked upstairs briefly about you know the downrange candle power and one of the things we used a lot which is actually last fall uh, was this waypoint light when you're thinking about on a boat when you're thinking about getting to a field with decoys and setting up a spread you need down you need down light power you need something that's portable so that multiple people can have this shoot it out and you're good so this is one of the biggest things that you know we found a lot of use and I know for sure uh, one of the deer that Carson shot last year you know he was out he likes to get dogs out looking for mm -hmm. deer with them because he thinks yep. he's like tracking dogs which they're smart I mean they can smell the, but they smell the blood but um, so we're using this tracking the blood with the dogs, um, super cool. And, uh, and it was designed specifically for water, was it not? I mean, or for, I believe it was designed specifically for people on a boat. It, it was, we actually yeah. partnered with a group in the, in the marine industry yeah. and they were looking for a, a spotlight uh, with a handle downrange light. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, they wanted the filter. So, you know, the green filter for processing your way through the woods, it really reduces shadows. Yeah. And then we have a red filter, which is good to maintain your night vision. Super cool. Um, next one that every outdoorsman probably has is a standard headlamp. Um, what I think felt th what this one was a little bit different is it had the it had the spotlight. Well, I say spotlight all the time, so but it has like the downrange candle power, the spotlight. Plus, it also has the. Um, it's got a green light. The green, the green light. Uh, exactly. So when you're walking through the woods, to use a green light, it really reduces shadowing. So it makes it a little a little easier to walk through the woods. Also, green light doesn't spook game. Right. They don't see the green light. But this has eight different functions. It's got a spot, a flood, and each one is three different outputs, low, medium, high, and then the green, green has a low and a high also. So eight different functions. I know we did, oh, Cole and I were, last fall, we, we had posted about this light, because a lot of people don't know, you know, they just take a light into the woods in the middle of the night and they try it. But you know, it's impossible for me to know if I ask a deer, hey, did you see this light versus this light? But you know, we all have our thoughts and beliefs on it. And, you know, so when we go in, we're, I'm using this green light, unless I have to turn the camera on to get a shot of the camera quick to turn the other one on. But, you know, we're using green, and this has the ability to use green when you're going for deer, mm -hmm. and then turn the other one on when you're out setting up decoys in the morning when you can't see. Yeah, and the nice thing about this downrange light, this goes 100 meters downrange on the spot function, yeah. which is unique for a headlamp. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, next favorite toy from the fall. This one actually really didn't get, uh, really didn't get, this is the Siege. Siege. Super Siege. Super Siege. The yeah. biggest one. I grabbed the big one because I like the big one. Yeah. Uh, this one got a lot of application for us. Just in June, we went on a, a hunting trip to Hawaii, shot Axis deer. And believe it or not, we were in Hawaii and remote, remote side of the island. And they had solar paneling all over the roof. And of course, we're charging everything. 
and we get to the point finally where we, we blow it. We have no more power in there in the log. So what do we do? I had the super seeds and a couple other smaller ones, and what we did is just hung them outside. We still grilled, still cooked dinner, and uh, you know, this thing comes out, so you still get all your illumination here, but you get it, you know, versus the traditional light, you're gonna get it, you know, one direction. Mm -hmm. This I was able to put in the middle of the table as a centerpiece, hanging up top, just like a light bulb, like a, like on the top of the ceiling, and it did exactly what we wanted. The one thing that, you know, we did use too, because we're talking about out of power, is this had so much juice in it, we were able to still charge, you know, like you our charge cell, your cell phones. Charge our cell phones through it, which pull the power out. Again, is something that it doesn't happen very often. So when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're out camping, you're out backpacking, you know, this was something that was an absolute game changer for us because you can set up spotlights all you want, but if you can get 360 light like this, turn the lights off in here, and you're probably still gonna get the same amount of illumination we have now, that was a really cool product. We're glad we were with you. Yeah, yeah. You, you were with us on that <laughs> one. Um, my last favorite toy from the fall, and I don't know the, the entire backstory of this product, but this is the light box. Yeah, that's the E-Flood light box. The E-Flood light box, so the one yes. that we have a couple like this and we have a couple even bigger ones, but you know, for me, you know, you're trying to produce a hunting show, you're trying to get content when it's dark, you know, you face this decision, like, how am I gonna do this? And all sorts of um, industrial professionals, same way, they're at night, they're working on a job and they can't see how can they do it. So we use this couple different aspects. So this would just pop up, it stands up. We use it kind of as a spotlight to set a scene, to film, uh, you know, me talking to the camera after we harvest an animal, we've used it we were not in Carson's front yard on both sides playing a game of volleyball at 10.30 at night. And that was probably the most common aspect of it. We loved it. Uh, we just can't see there. And then lastly, you know, harvesting an animal was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But then how are you going to, so often I use a headlamp to work on, you know, the processing, breaking it down, doing all that. Lose the headlamp, set up a couple of these, hanging it from a tractor, cleaning it mm -hmm. ethically and just able to use this in a lot of different uh, unique aspects. And we developed this light really for the New York City Transit Authority, folks that are working underground eight hours at a time that need that extended run time to light up a work scene. Yeah. But I love hearing the different applications that you yeah. guys use it for and that, in and that's the hunting the, world. And that's the beautiful thing, as you said, these were originally created, you know, a different, probably a different, you know, use. Mm -hmm. But getting into the outdoor space, now you're starting to hear how other people are translating some of those products into outdoor application because it doesn't go, it goes beyond the industrial, the workspace, it goes Absolutely. into the outdoors and the outdoors thing. So, um, those are some of the products that we use this fall. Anything else you want to highlight, Mike? Well, if you take a look at these lights, I mean, it's we are the rechargeable guys. So, what you see on this wall here in the middle is these are all rechargeable lights for law enforcement. You have duty lights, tactical lights, and then for any kind of firefighting application. And you know, again, we really consider those some of our core markets that we've been working in for over 40 years. Uh, but that's the beauty of Streamlight, really, is the broad product line. So no matter the customer base, uh, a lot of this product here is designed and engineered. It's, uh, it's purpose-built yeah. uh, with input from the customer. Yeah, I think you know, we talk about all the different aspects now, and as you go down, I mean, it's even, getting to the, even gotten to the amazing point where we're talking tax, but we're talking military attachments for firearms. Uh, mm -hmm. People who are overseas, you know, put their lives on the line. We're not just making, you know, siege lights for people out camping, but these are you know, life or death, um, put your money where your mouth is to make sure they're okay, so. And uh, great customer bases to serve. Yeah. yeah. And awesome. they're happy to give us their feedback on the product also, so they're great partners. Yeah, definitely. They really are. Well, cool. Well, Mike, I appreciate you showing us around, showing all the products. You Look bet. forward Thanks. to building this relationship, and uh, appreciate you for having us. Great to meet you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, you bet.